WFSB. This is an Eyewitness News update. Good morning and thanks for joining us on this Wednesday, December 27th. I'm Sam Smink. We'll take a look at some top stories in a moment, but first let's check in with meteorologist Lauren Richardson because we're in a first alert right now. We are Sam and we are concerned still about this fog. It's like deja vu from yesterday, but we have issued a first alert because we're still seeing some widespread fog across our state. So this obviously impacts travel out there. Now this dense fog advisory do want to mention has been dropped for some northern counties, but it's still there for southern counties counties at the moment. This is through this morning through later this morning, uh, so we'll be continuing to keep you updated. However, these numbers still not looking great. Chester only a quarter of a mile of visibility right now, as well as Windsor locks to uh, three quarters of a mile in Waterbury. So take your time heading out the door. Plus, not only do we have the fog, but we also have some rain that is making its way in on our first alert live radar, the only live radar in the state of Connecticut. So yeah, we do want to let you know in Northwest Connecticut, you might be seeing some showers in Cornwall and Torrington and Harwinton and Bethlehem and Watertown in Plymouth. And this is going to continue through a lot of today. So not the nicest day, kind of gloomy out there. It's very mild too. We're going to be tracking this rain mostly in this afternoon. It's going to become more widespread from west to east. And then through the overnight hours, it will become heavy at times and really come pouring down. Uh, so we could pick up anywhere from a half an inch to an inch and a half of rainfall. Now for tomorrow, we'll continue to see some isolated showers and same thing for Friday, but it does look dry for the last day of 2023, specifically on Sunday. Now, Saturday, possibly some showers as well. We're keeping a close eye on that for you, but our future cast showing us, yes, we could pick up uh, a decent amount of rainfall from this storm system through the overnight hours. But today it's just going to be kind of once again gloomy, some showers out there. We've got all this moisture moving its way up the coast right now. And uh, yeah, it's going to continue to move its way in. So for this afternoon, rain becomes more widespread in the evening. Evening, you could see some of those yellows, those oranges. That's where the rain is really coming down at times into tomorrow morning. So early tomorrow morning, we'll still see some pouring rain at times, but this will wrap up by maybe 8, 9, 10 o'clock and then just clouds kind of blanketing over the state. Temperatures topping out in the 50s in a lot of spots. Still very mild for this time of year as our normal high temperature in the Hartford area is in the upper 30s. So this continues with cloud cover into Thursday and much of Friday as well. Friday, those clouds really don't budge. We could see a couple showers in the morning developing into a steadier rainfall in the afternoon and evening. And it's even possible to see a little bit of mixing in some northern locations for Friday as well. Here's a live look in Windsor Locks. You can't really see too much in the background. As mentioned, it's very foggy out there, 40 degrees, and a live look in Middletown, which uh, definitely has gotten a little bit better since earlier this morning, but we're still seeing some fog. So temperatures in the upper 30s and the 40s out there. You can also see wind speeds are fairly calm. That's not too much of an issue. It's been a very warm and wet year, but warmest December is on record for the Hartford area. Yeah, right now we're at the third warmest with that average temperature of 38.5 degrees. So we're going to continue to keep you posted on that. Our high today, though, look at this 47, 50s along the shoreline. Very mild for this time of year. Mild conditions continue tomorrow, and then we drop back into the 40s, back into the 30s for the weekend. Once again, Saturday, we could see some showers. We're keeping optimistically dry for now Sunday into Monday. New Year's Eve into New Year's Day, though, does look quiet, sunny for Sunday, and then a couple more clouds for New Year's Day. Uh, temperatures in the 40s to kick off the first couple of days of 2024. We'll be keeping you posted, of course. Sam? Lauren, thank you. Developing news in East Hartford where police are investigating a suspicious death. Police tell us they found a man's body near Burnside Avenue around 1030 last night. The man's name has not been released. We've been hitting the phones working to learn more and whether or not a crime was committed. We'll keep you updated both on air and the Channel 3 app as we learn more. A suspect is on the run this morning after hitting a Rocky Hill police officer with their car during an arrest. Pinpoint News Tracker takes you to the scene right on Cold Spring Road. We're told the officer pulled a vehicle over just before 10 last night after finding out the owner had an active arrest warrant. The suspect hit the gas when the officer tried to remove them from the car, knocking down the officer and leading police on a chase on I-91 North. Once in Hartford, they lost sight of the suspect. The injured officer is expected to be okay. Police are investigating. 
With fog still covering many parts of the state, travelers at Bradley Airport are hoping things go smoothly this morning after multiple delays and cancellations already. There was also fog last night, which made it difficult to see outside the airport, and many people were left scrambling to adjust their plans. If you're flying this holiday season, airlines recommend keeping a close eye on your flight status. Continuing developments in Israel's war against Hamas, a key meeting was held Tuesday between U.S. and Israeli leaders. The White House says they discussed the need for Israel to focus on high value Hamas target, high value Hamas targets, Israel's post-war plans for Gaza and the need to improve the humanitarian situation there. The World Health Organization says hospitals in Gaza are overwhelmed with patients, many of them civilians. Police in Middletown are trying to figure out what caused a serious head-on crash. It happened yesterday morning on Washington Street. This is a photo of the aftermath. Police say one driver was stuck in his car, but crews freed him and brought him to the hospital. They believe he lost control and crashed into the other car. The two people in the second car were not hurt. And we're learning that a man has died after a serious dirt bike crash in Thompson. Another person was brought to the hospital after the wreck Saturday afternoon. Pinpoint News Tracker shows us where it happened in Quadic State Forest. 22 year old Steven Zagrafos died in the collision. The cause of the crash is still under investigation. New information this morning on a story we've been following out of Newtown. The Department of Children and Families is investigating after police say a Newtown woman shot someone on Christmas Eve. Police arrested 32 year old Megan Gavea after she barricaded herself inside of a home on Boggs Hill Road for several hours. Investigators say she shot a man during an argument. We're told he will survive. Gavea is facing several charges, including two counts of risk of injury to a minor, Manchester police are asking for your help to locate a missing woman. She's on your screen there. Police say 32 year old Zelena Whitehead has been missing since Sunday. If you have any information, please contact Manchester police. We're now learning the name of the elderly woman found dead inside of a Bristol home. The body of 83 year old Diana Jones was found on Christmas morning. Police are calling her death suspicious. They showed up to a home on Morningside Drive for a well being check just before noon. That's when they found her body inside of a bedroom. No word yet on any suspects or who might be responsible. As soon as we have any updates, we'll let you know both on air and online. Thanks so much for tuning in to Eyewitness News. Remember, you can get news and weather updates anytime on the Channel 3 app. Have a great day.